My entire life has been predicated on a scoreboard. I knew exactly what my job description was. I knew exactly how I was performing. If I won, if I lost, if I helped the team, if I hurt the team, it was, it was immediate. A lot of basketball players and athletes in general who, who play to that scoreboard struggle when they step away because there's not a real scoreboard in, in real life. My plan is just to, to tackle big things, tackle scary things, to, to fail. And so for me, why not swim? Why not swim? And the ultimate goal is to be a triathlete. I think the, the quest to, to continually improve myself is, has led me to this point here today. You know, when I was a, a kid growing up, uh, I loved sports, but I loved basketball in particular. And I just wanted to, to get as good as I could get. And I wanted to take basketball as far as I could, as I could take it. I wasn't the, the fastest guy on the basketball court. I certainly wasn't the strongest. Uh, people knocked me for my lack of athleticism. And I realized not how fast you were, how strong you were, it's, it's how hard you worked. Growing up in Michigan, I actually didn't like Duke a whole lot growing up. I was a huge Fab Five Michigan fan. Um, it wasn't until Grant Hill came along, uh, led his team to the national championship in, in 94. I said, you know what? I want to be Grant Hill. And so if it were for Grant Hill, I don't know if I would have ever gone to Duke, but he, uh, he introduced me to, to what Duke was about. And Duke was about class, it was about style, it was uh, about working hard. And the more I learned about Duke, it, for me it was a no-brainer. It combined the best of both worlds, one of the top academic universities in the world, and obviously one of the best basketball programs. And so uh, when I was a senior looking at schools, it was Duke and it was everybody else. I wouldn't trade my senior year uh, for, for anything in the world. Now, granted, I won a national championship and I was national player of the year. So it was a pretty good year for me, but just to be able to go through four years at Duke University, it was, it was an, an unbelievable experience. When I stepped out into the real world my, my first day after graduation, I felt I was ready to take on the world. And I felt I was prepared, I'd learned a lot in my time, both in the classroom and on the court and outside the classroom and in the game of life. I, I had two simple goals when I started the NBA. One was to play 10 years, and the other one was to walk away from the game before the game kicked me out. I figured if, if I could play 10 years, I don't care what my stats were, that's a heck of a career. It's a heck of a run in, in professional basketball. And my, my mindset has always been, what can I do to improve the team, to help the team win? win championships, win the game, win the quarter, whatever it is. And I was lucky to play 13 years, which was beyond my, my, my wildest dreams. Now that I'm out of the game, part of me was sad because you're outside of that circle. No matter how much I went through uh, with the guys on, on the bench and on the floor, you're an ex-player and it's different. And it did leave me a little, a little sad. And I realized how much I missed the camaraderie of the locker room and, and the thrill of the competition. But Looking at the game, I say, man, my body feels great. I don't miss that beating at all. <laughs> I did the best that I could do for as long as I could do it. And I walked away um, when I wanted to walk away. And that was, uh, that's, a, that's a good feeling. Now that I'm retired and I don't have that feeling for basketball, uh, I look forward to exploring life and uh, trying to improve and, and learn new skills that uh, were foreign territory to, to me before, like swimming. Because I'd never taken formal sw swimming lessons. I'm, I'm not scared of the water, uh, but I'm not winning any, any, any 1,500 butterfly medleys anytime soon. <laughs> and, so, and so I said, you know what, one day I would like to learn how to swim. And, uh, and you use that drive that got me 13 years in the NBA and a couple championships. Uh, in the water, and the ultimate goal is to be a triathlete. I got my first taste of a triathlon uh, this spring at the, at the South Beach Triathlon. I was part of a relay. I only, only did the bike portion of the triathlon because I didn't know how to swim. And I, I was really blown away by, by the sense of community of, of the tri, by the triathletes. It was so positive. And after stepping away from the game for a year, you know, I, I, I missed the locker room. And I missed that community. And I thought, this is, this is really cool. This is something I can really be a part of and something I, I want to throw myself into. First, I got I to gotta swim. And so that, that led me to, uh, to taking these lessons. I'll never do anything 
um, without the mindset that I'm gonna get as, as good as I, as I can get. So that's the competitor in me. That's, uh, that's something that you can never turn off. That's the fun part. I, I, I have no baseline. I have no baseline. I have no expectations, but I know I'm gonna, gonna get better. It, it brings me back to, to the days when I was really starting to dive into the game of basketball, learning how to swim basically all over again. And it's funny, when you start feeling the improvement uh, through hard work and practice and dedication, it's an amazing feeling. You just want to get better and better and better. That's, that's the, the fun in life, is trying new things and falling flat in your face and getting up and, and feeling the improvement. I, that's something I hope to pass on to, to, you know, to my kids. And never be afraid of trying something new, even though you may look like a fool. It's not about that. So it's about testing your personal limits, your, your, your personal boundaries, and, and pushing through those boundaries.